the James Bond film that's uh, premiered today or tomorrow or yesterday. Friday. Let's not fall out over it. We're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> there's no gadgets in this one, is there? No, no gadgets. There's not, not many, many no gadgets. gadgets. ripping Let's... off the born identity. Yeah. The born identity did it! It's James Bond. He should have an umbrella coming out of his ass. <laughs> Uh, Nikki, are you looking forward to the Bond movie? Yeah, I am. I mean, I'm not a big Daniel Craig fan. You don't? You're not? No, I think I just, I just, Bond's just shouldn't be blonde. He shouldn't be blonde? So I see Bond's as being a bit more dark haired and a bit more rugged. <laughs> a bit more dark haired, a bit more rugged? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Daniel Craig's from Liverpool. Well, he's, he's, he grew up on the world, didn't he? I think, and, yeah. and he's lost that accent. <clears throat> Don't you think that would make a better Bond? The name's Bond, James Bond. Fucking smearing off ice, you prick. Yes, the new James Bond film is out this week. Every woman wants him, every man wants to be him, with his steely eyes, incredible physique, and his chisel features. It's impossible not to look at Sean Locke and think this guy should be Bond. <laughs> You're probably yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Craig had got a gash on his face whilst filming. I suppose that's one of the perks of being Bond, isn't it? <laughs> okay. One more thing to get. Something happening this week. <laughs> Go on. Ooh. Asthma. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the asthma? <laughs> Go on, rocket it up. <laughs> Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. Come on, say it with me. Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Go on. Um, it's Halloween, and uh, <laughs> and uh, all That's the... you can say, really. Yeah, isn't it? Basically, it's happening, and all the kids come and knock on your door every five minutes, asking for sweets, which is like a takeaway service for paedophiles. It's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they did was they sat down with all the paedophiles, and they agreed that on Halloween they'd have a kind of ceasefire. <laughs> 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 OK, one day of the year, can you stop your tampering ways? <laughs> Let the kids go, a bit of fun, we can all relax. When I was a kid with trick-or-treating, right, if someone said trick or they didn't answer the door but you knew they were in, right, you would maybe egg their house or, uh, you know, throw a bit of toilet roll through the trees or whatever. Uh, but they, I read the other day that one of the tricks this year is burning people's cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not a trick, that's, that's a crime, isn't it? <laughs> it's not a trick or military coup. <laughs> yes, it's Halloween. What a lot of the local kids don't realise is I was planning on covering my house with toilet paper anyway, so the joke's on them. <laughs> so, those are the five most talked about things this week. In other news, they're saying the credit crunch spells a return to the 1970s. <laughs> I haven't done my French homework. <laughs> Anna can stay underwater for 28 minutes or longer if you don't mind it dying. <laughs> per square inch of head, people with red hair have 750 fewer friends than other people. <laughs> Forgot we had one in. <laughs> and 93% of all greeting cards are purchased by women. Well, if they made a I'm bored with you but I can't be bothered to leave you card, maybe we'd buy more. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Jason Stone, what do you think the top five most talked about things in Britain are this week? Well, we've got one person who's been talked about all week right here, haven't we? Louis Walsh. Over there, it's been talked about on the old uh, X Factor on Saturday. Oh, Everybody's boom. going crazy yeah. about it. Oh. <laughs> I voted somebody out. Yes. But I kept somebody as well. Who did you keep? I kept Ruth. Is she Titty Spaniard? She, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she was the best in the sing off. She She's sang... the best Titty Spaniard I've ever seen. <laughs> That's what Simon Last thinks too. Night I dreamt of no, no, no. Pedro. <laughs> Jimmy, doom, this doom, is so. <laughs> She deserved to stay. The other girl, bad song, hiding behind the piano, badly styled. I had to vote somebody out. If everybody cared so much about Laura, why didn't they vote for her, so? Well, if there was any way that they could, they would have. <laughs> you lift your phone and you dial. You lift your phone and you dial? Yeah. Oh, like in the olden days? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, there's four good girls left. That's no way to talk about JLS. <laughs> Do you think it's gone a bit too far? Because there were questions asked in the House of Commons. About, about Laura been voted off? Yeah, isn't that...? Ridiculous. Well, 
you know, you were up at Jonathan Ross's house. He was mentioned in the House of Commons as well, so... The world's gone mad. Yeah, yeah. Well, There's nothing else in the news, really. Nothing there's nothing else, else in the news except celebrities. Yeah, there's no economic disaster or... No. Yeah, David Cameron mentioned something about something that happened in an episode of Pingu. He <laughs> said, there's no way to slip through that ice. <laughs> in July, maybe, but not. Not in November. <laughs> <laughs> I have thought about going on the X Factor, but the pro problem is all my family are healthy, my dad hasn't been in prison. <laughs> I wasn't bullied, you know. I mean, no, no use. When you think about it, what the X Factor does, it takes people's sort of domestic tragedies and kind of turns them into qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's dead, your dog's got cancer, you're going to have a hit. <laughs> is, that, is that unfair? You... you... <laughs> And I like Danny Minogue on it because everyone gets very emotional about it and she's so professional because she <laughs> never shows any emotion. Does she? <laughs> that's the sign of a real professional. How does she manage that, Lou? I think it's something to do with Botox. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't! I like the first few episodes. They're my favourites. The first few episodes when there's the proper head the balls on. You know what I mean? Like, proper nutters, though. Pro no. like, they could really shorten it, you know, for me. Like, proper people just going along the queue going, where are you from, Leeds? Where are you from? Hull, where are you from? Narnia! All right, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> That's I feel sorry for them all. That's how I feel when I watch Corrie. <laughs> k -Van, you do a lot of voices on Phone Jacket. Yes. Would you consider doing... Well, the X Factor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I could do a name that tune right now. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> everybody, touch your body. Shin shin de, everybody, everybody like me. Uh. <laughs> I didn't think anyone could make that song gayer than George Michael, but you <laughs> owned it. <laughs> Thank you. There's another scandal, wasn't there? There's one of the girls who was given a week off cos she had laryngitis. Yeah. I, I don't Diana. think that's wrong. You get a week off. Freddie Mercury had AIDS. He carried on singing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the X Factor is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, it is the third most talked about thing this week. Did you know, for example, there are 759 pubs in Britain called the Red Lion? My favourite is the Red Lion. <laughs> An eighth of all liposuction patients are now in a bin round the back of the hospital. <laughs> and in Sweden, an average of ten car crashes a day involve the death of a moose, which is why the Swedes are such a good-looking race. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Sean, Jim, James, what have the nation been talking about? Is it the tragic tale of the uh, Madonna and Guy Ritchie divorce? Were you just wiping away a tear? Yeah, yeah, wiping away a tear. Wiping away a tear. It's turned out to be quite acrimonious. She said uh, she came out and said that he always um, belittle her in front of people. Last night, she played to 28,000 people in Vancouver and called him a retard. Now, emotionally <laughs> retarded. Yeah. An emotional retard. Right, that, that, 28,000 people and, like, a few mates down the pub, yeah. just cos <laughs> she <laughs> said... She probably said, I'm an actress, and they all just pissed themselves <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Part of the problem is her cabal of faith. Like, uh, in their house, she's banned Christmas. I was thinking, she's called Madonna, right? <laughs> that's, like, that's like Captain Birdseye banning fish. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand the bitterness that people were displaying. Like, everybody's rubbing their hands together with glee because they, they, they're splitting up. Oh, look at them, they enjoyed seven years of marriage, the failures. <laughs> All the relationships I've had only last as long as it takes us to pass a reasonable-looking or even just clean man on the street, and then they're off clawing desperately at his back. So I just find <laughs> it quite sad. Well, don't go out with cats. <laughs> <laughs> you pervert. <laughs> Are you a fan of his work? Guy Ritchie? Yeah, I, I just find it odd that every Guy Ritchie film that comes out has on the poster Ritchie back to his best, mm. which, you know, was just sort of above average. <laughs> <laughs> In the new film, it's all like, what is it about to be a rock and roller? I don't shiver get. <laughs> <laughs> it bothers me that she's a mum, and if you look at all her <laughs> recent videos, she's always in knickers, and we get it. Okay, you work out, you've got a good body. Pants, put a little skirt on, perhaps. Pair of shorts. I think for her age, she still looks quite 
quite fit. She is 80, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I think she should come on in an orange. Just a little hands and arms, like a promotion. You know, you know like when they promote a new drink? Yeah. And someone dresses up as an orange? Yeah. Why doesn't she have a bit of fun, have a laugh with yeah. it now? Yeah. Madonna's orange tour. She just comes out in an orange. orange. Rolls around <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> The encore, she, she comes out as like a hot dog. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. In it. yeah. <laughs> a banana, a face in a banana. <laughs> OK, let's see if Madonna and Guy Ritchie are one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> this is the continuing story of Madonna and Guy Ritchie's divorce. They used to have great nights out down the pub. Old, peculiar, bitter. Are just three reasons why he chose to divorce her. <laughs> Okay, fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Sure. George Osborne has been... He's got himself into trouble because when, uh, when Peter Mandelson was brought back into the government, he he released some some sort of comments that uh, Peter Mandelson had made, private comments... He private said he's dinner. been dripping poison, yeah. I believe, about uh, Gordon Brown. In response, Nat Rothschild has said that uh, he was trying to solicit donations from a Russian billionaire. The richest man in Russia, which every Russian seems to be. <laughs> <laughs> He said he, he, um, he met him twice and on, on, on this fella's yacht, and he, but he never asked him for money, he said, which I think is fair enough, isn't it? I mean, you've met somebody twice and you're <laughs> on their yacht. How do you even slip it like, oh, what's its top speed? Oh, brilliant. How many does it sleep like? <laughs> Can I have 50 grand? <laughs> like, <laughs> is that him? I feel sorry for the Russian. He's a billionaire. He's got a beautiful yacht moored in a beautiful harbour. He wakes up in the morning, tells his butler, he goes, well, what's on the itinerary today? He goes, well, we've got Peter Mandelson and George Osborne coming on board. <laughs> Are you serious? I want supermodels. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson in some floss. <laughs> and maybe a little dab of MDMA. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what an oligarch was. I thought it was a sort of sea I cow. What is I it? I still don't. It's like the body of a lion with a horse's head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see if it's up there. <laughs> Top thing people miss about childhood. Is it the satisfaction of bellowing, I'm finished, and somebody coming up and wiping your ass? <laughs> <laughs> I did that today. My daughter could quite easily do that herself. But she says, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, hang on, I'm trying to read grants here, Mum, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, um, limitless possibilities? My mother told me when I was a kid, she asked me what did I want to be when I grow up, and I told her I wanted to be a fire engine. This <laughs> <laughs> is fucking crazy, but a part of me still wants to. <laughs> <laughs> Have six firemen ride you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I miss most of all, scabs. Yeah. Yeah. Two to three hours out of a couple of scabs. It, <laughs> it, to me, it was the PlayStation of my day. Yeah. You get a scab, you just get it going and lift it right off. Just so it's almost sort of hanging off yeah. like a saucepan yeah. lid. Yeah. Just keep flicking it. Did yours taste like bacon? No. <laughs> I miss maths homework. Oh. You're literally the only person in the world. <laughs> Do you know what I like about being young, it's small anyway, is that there's no small talk. No yes. sort of chat about how yeah. are you, what are you up People come up to me now and say, what have you been up to? I think, well, what do you think? Eat, sleep, drink, I killed a moth, whatever. <laughs> when you're nine, you go cycle around to your mate's house, you knock on the door, I'm sorry, you go, do you want to come for a bike ride? And he doesn't say anything, he just goes, no. And you go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> top, top thing people miss about childhood. Playing out? Playing in the street. That's the right answer. Oh, oh boom! Yeah. Yes, the top thing people miss about childhood is playing in the street. When I was a kid, we used to play swing grope, bin finger, knicker chase, hop snatch crack. It was just a more innocent time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next one. All right. Worst thing you can do on um, a date? Uh, is it celebrate your three minute anniversary? <laughs> 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 Woo! Congratulations! <laughs> you, must have been, you must have been on a lot of dates, you know this. I've had some nightmare dates. I went out on a, a first date a while back, actually, and this is honest to God truth. And uh, it was going quite well. Got into some conversation about scars, bizarrely, and we're saying, oh, what's your biggest scar? And I'm like, oh, I've got a scar on my arm. They're like, what about you? And she said, uh, mine's internal. I was like, mm, what, what? She goes, yeah, I, I was having sex with this guy a while back, and he was so well endowed, he ruptured me inside. <laughs> oh, no, there's more. She goes, I went to hospital, I almost died. <laughs> How self-assured do I look? I'm like, I can't promise that. But... 
I'll do my best. Can I take this opportunity to apologise? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like to. First date, first thing, go have a Chinese burn. <laughs> and then I lay out all the photos of them going to and from work for the last two weeks. <laughs> and I go, um, don't like those shoes, they'll have to go. <laughs> Take your mum. That is the right answer. Well wow. Done. Yes, the worst thing you can do on a date is bring your parents. I took my girlfriend on a date and my parents just happened to be there. I say date, it was my nana's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> there was food and booze and everyone got dressed up. What does she want? Sean, Rich, Russell, what else have the nation been talking about? Jeremy Clarkson's come through uh, with a cracking truckers murdering prostitute joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's done a joke about the fact that lorry drivers spend any spare moment they've got murdering <laughs> prostitutes. <laughs> but the thing is, it's gone out before the watershed. It's gone out at 8.30 at night, and the BBC had loads more complaints in the wake of the uh, uh, John Ross Russell Bland thing. This is the last thing the BBC needs. Cool, oh, blimey. <laughs> I think what they should do, right, is scrap the licence fee. The way they should fund the BBC is, is their complaints number should be a premium rate phone line. <laughs> It's absolute filth on the BBC all day long. <laughs> and they just get so many complaints, it just, we don't need a licence fee. <laughs> John Cotton know. just, like, stabbing someone in the eye. <laughs> it's not just uh, truck drivers that have been offended by it. There's, um, I mean, I didn't see the original recording. I still put a complaint in. But, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tradition now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, do you know, Clarkson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do I think? do. It's kind of I a think it's a bit, you know, people are jumping on the bandwagon after... What? Jumping on the bandwagon? What, and all trying to kill a prostitute? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Top Gear is such a macho show. It does oh, need yes. some feminine input. <laughs> this time of year in autumn, it's a surprise they don't grow antlers and start rutting each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, competitive. Why don't they have a lady in, in Top Gear? Why do they... Is it just so blokey? Oh, Jodie's been on Top Gear. I've been on as a, as a guest. Yeah, well, not as a, a car. <laughs> 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 How did you do on the old uh, circuit? I was top and I think you beat me, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I have the record for doing the whole thing in third gear. <laughs> Just put it in third and rip the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it in a shopping trolley with loads of cans. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite late at night, they'd all gone home. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's see if Jeremy Clarkson's one of the most talked-about things this week. <laughs> yes, this is the story Jeremy Clarkson got into trouble for suggesting all lorry drivers murder prostitutes. I tell you what, 99% of lorry drivers give the other 1% a bad name. <laughs> OK, uh, Jason, Michael and Jody, what else have the nation been talking about? Is it uh, Donald Trump and his £1 billion resort, golf resort up in, uh, up in Swanky, Scotland? Yeah. Uh, he's decided right over an area of. Why would you say Swanky Scotland? <laughs> just because it's Scotland, Scotland, isn't it? Like you're in a game show. Well, you and a friend can go to Swanky, Swanky Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> I don't think you should try to ruin the, the uniform greyness of Aberdeen with a green fairway. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a granite city. Grey. It is grey, yeah. I met a colorblind man once, <laughs> Aberdeen. Took him out of town and cured him. <laughs> I don't think that he should build this, this golf course and he should go away. Yeah. Rich, what, what do you Trump, think? I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like the cut of his jib. I don't like anything about him. I don't like the way he walks. I don't like the way he talks. I particularly don't like whatever the hell he's got on top of his head. <laughs> it looks like someone's dropped a jumper on it. <laughs> but that's what yeah, I'm saying. It looks like it. someone's just dropped... A jumper's just gone yeah. plop on his head and he's gone... I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> Mark Twain said, golf is a good walk spoiled, right, which I think shows how far we've come, doesn't it? Because now a good walk spoiled is being stabbed by a hoodie, isn't it? Or... <laughs> right, let's have a look and see whether this is one of the most talked about things this week. Jim, James, what do you like the look of? What do you like the look of? I like the, uh, the man that's had two arms put on. The, the man with the arms. It's been announced that the world's first double arm transplant uh, is recovering well, so we polled our studio audience and asked them, if you lost an arm, would you rather have a robotic arm or someone else's as a replacement? 
This is the guy he had uh, in Germany, didn't he? Uh, he had an arm transplanted, two arms transplanted on. But didn't he lose his arms in a shredder? Yeah, he's a farmer. Yeah, how do you lose two arms? Like, did one arm go in and you go, oh, I better get that back. <laughs> oh! <laughs> now look what I've done! <laughs> bit like sawing a leg off a chair, like he lost a few fingers and then he thought that doesn't even out, so I'll just shove a bit more of this arm in. Guy, when he when he recovers, he can do things like he can just go bang, hit someone in the face, not go, me. not me. Well, <laughs> now, <laughs> bang, the guy was a nutter. Yeah. <laughs> but I find it so strange if I was going out with a guy and he was, you know, getting a bit busy, romancing. And he just said, you know, these aren't my hands. What if, though, Olivia, yeah. he was getting busy in the bedroom, you're getting a bit amorous, things are getting heated, he pulls away, the arm stays. <laughs> The alternative for this guy, as opposed to you getting going, oh, someone oh, else's oh. arms, robotic arms. If I did get a robot arm, I'd want it not to be just like a claw, like an Abu Hanza. I'd want it to have, like, Swiss Army knife functions. <laughs> I'd like a bottle opener, <laughs> um, a corkscrew. He wants a frying pan there and a whisk. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, we polled the audience, we asked them, would you rather have someone else's arm or a robotic arm? What do you think they said? What are you going to go with? I think people would like a real arm. You think real? Yeah. No, because a robotic works right away, but I'll take real if that's what you real, two real. want. You're, real. Gonna, you're overruling your team. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, real. I can tell you, 75% of our audience said they wanted a robotic arm. <laughs> 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 if I lost both my arms, I'd probably just shrug it off. Jason, Charlie and Olivia, what do you like the look of? We'll go with yeah. the Scouts. OK, you're going with the Scouts? This week it was announced that the Scouts are to be given sex education, so we polled the studio audience and asked them should they be given sex education. Maybe it's been taught ironically, like, uh, if you weren't in the Scouts, you'd be... This is what you'd be having, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is what all the kids your age are doing while you're, you know, making fires and crying yourself to yeah. sleep in a tent. This is what you could have won. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing the first Scout with a fingering badge. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be in the Scouts. In the handbook, they used to say, because Baden Powell didn't approve of sex, that wasn't what... Baden Powell's the guy who invented Scouts, in case you're missing it. And he said, if you feel like having sex, put your, put your genitals in cold water and walk it off. And then, and then come to my room? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. We polled the studio audience and asked them, should the Scouts be given sex education? Yes. I think, they, I think yeah, I think they look like a, a modern bunch. OK, well, I can tell you that you're absolutely right. 81% of our audience think that the Scouts should be given sexual education. <laughs> we polled our studio audience and asked them, if you had to make a choice, what would you give up? Christmas dinner or Christmas presents? Whoever invented Christmas dinner or came up with, I want to shake, I want to kiss his face, right? Yeah. You don't put any weight on, do you, on Christmas Day? No. no. That's, our little, that's, that's our little gift off Jesus. Fact. <laughs> he said, eat as many matchsticks and, uh, and, and miniature true. heroes as you want. On, it's in the Bible. Uh, and, um... <laughs> I don't like presents. How do you not like no, presents? First thing I say when I open the present after... Well, the second thing I say, first thing I say is, keep your seat. Second <laughs> <laughs> thing I always say, and I get right up close, say you're my dad and you give me a present, I get right up close, with holding the present, I go, I hope this isn't my main present. <laughs> <laughs> when Father Christmas wasn't real. I remember going home and speaking to Dad, going, Dad, is Father Christmas real? And he said, no, it's not real. I remember thinking, God, cos I remember thinking, how is everyone all right with this guy just coming in our house? <laughs> yeah. We spend all year, like, Mum going, what was that? Was that someone coming in? <laughs> Malcolm, you've locked that door, haven't you? The back door's locked, isn't it? Yeah. And then suddenly, one part of the year, we're going, yeah, there's a carrot, a pie, some milk, yeah. help yourself, we'll be in bed. Just, just <laughs> a free run of the house. I remember thinking, this is f***ing, this is insane. <laughs> Make sure you go in and leave a present at the end of James's bed. I'm all right, Mum. <laughs> leave it downstairs under the tree. That does look like the last thing. What would you say, would you guess, that weight of that turkey is? It's not I'd actually go, one of the questions we've got. <laughs> <laughs> well, the brilliant thing about this game is, we'll never know. <laughs> I'm going to invent a machine that you can weigh things in photographs. You take a photograph of something, like that big yeah, camera thing yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. I'm not spoiling it for people at home. This is filmed in the studio. Um, 
So you photograph it, yeah. and then you put it into my machine, mm. my weighing things in photographs machine, it goes... <laughs> it calculates it, and then it gives you a weight. The it's only problem with that is that you have then eradicated the guess the weight game at yeah. Fates. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. ended it. You've, yeah. you've killed it. <laughs> Next, you've got a camera, you take a picture of it, it guesses how many sweets are in a jar. Yeah. Yeah. You take a yeah. picture of a teddy, it tells you the name. I'm glad you're <laughs> you, you are killing Fates. I'm an evil genius. <laughs> you are. OK, so what do you think people would give up, Steve Jones? Christmas dinner or Christmas presents? Yeah. Oh. John, could you invent a machine that would give us both? <laughs> what? So Dinner I could reverse the polarity of this question? Yes. <laughs> I need a pair of pliers, <laughs> a battery and some salmon. <laughs> Don't and ask. set to work immediately. <laughs> 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 This machine, <laughs> this machine is going to take a okay, while. Back it up! <laughs> back it up! Back it up! No, the blue one, you idiot! <laughs> All right, try him and had it. Sure, not saves Christmas. <laughs> okay, so what, what, what do you think? Christmas presents? Uh, Christmas I dinner. think this people all... would rather give up dinner. Me too. Yes, and we you... think the opposite. Whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I know you were, you were like a little renegade on Countdown. Do what you want in that corner with the numbers, but oh, right here there's a system and there's rules. I didn't take the pin out. And I'm the bloody captain. <laughs> you think they'd rather give up presents right. than you think dinner? Okay. What do you think? I think they'd rather give up presents. OK, I can tell you that 61% of our audience said they would rather give up Christmas dinner. Yay, right. we know. Oh, oh, You, Jenny, Jason, and Lee. What? Is it this? Is it belly drumming? Obesity business. Oh. The obesity business. Go on, tell well, us more. Tell me more. Uh, stop people being obese. The <gasps> government. Fat. Obese. Oh, fat. <laughs> yeah, Louis. That's Louis. another way of putting it. I'm going to join this initiative, right? Because I put on a bit of weight over the last. Uh, Don't few even weeks, say it. Right. No, have a guess. Just have, I weighed myself this morning, right? For this, right? I guess. Just have a guess what I weigh. Just have a guess. I know this is. I want to remain friends. Here. I would rather not take part in All this right, guessing game. <laughs> I reckon, uh, two well, Ronnie Corbett's. Two yeah. Ronnie Corbett's. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's being polite. He meant Barker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to join the initiative and I'm going to set my target as uh, the 5th of April, right? And I'm going to get down. Apparently, my target weight is 13 and a half. That's what I should be getting down to. I'm going to go April the 5th. That's end of the tax year. And then when that bloke comes on the telly going, time is running out, time is running out, I can pretend he's talking about my life. <laughs> It's a fine idea. I can tell you, this isn't one of the most talked-about things this oh, week, right. but it has been in the news. The government has launched a healthy eating campaign. Of course, it's not PC to use the term fat. We have to use words like bubble butt, fatty boom batty, <laughs> chunky monkey wobble slobs, <laughs> or blubber naught. <laughs> if you're insulted by any of those terms, how about a salad? <laughs> they should bring back bullying. That's what they should do. <laughs> Kids, weren't they? There was one in every class. The doctor should say, I prescribe three school bullies. And then, <laughs> as soon as you go out, they just run out, you go, Fatty, fatty, boom, boom! Fatty, fatty, boom. <laughs> yeah, you'd soon lose it. Sean, <laughs> Kayvan and Louis, what else have the nation been talking about? Is it the, uh, the raunchy vicar who was, uh, there was a ban from the clergy for 12 years for uh, being drunk in services and, uh, and swinging. swinging? Yeah, she's a swinging vicar. Not only did she do swinging, but she was also a voyeur. Because if she believes in... She believed that God would be watching. So that's a bit kinky. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, God, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think, all that praying in the daytime and swinging at the night time, <laughs> imagine, must have made havoc with her knees. <laughs> it'd be great if she did the marriage, wouldn't it? And she says, do you take him? Because I know I have. <laughs> oh, she only got caught when she turned up wearing the wrong dog collar. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of clues for all the keys in the collection plate. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is actually... The woman that should be blamed for this, or the bloke, is actually the careers officer who told her to go into it in the first place. Cos at some point, they've sat down with her and said, what are you into? And she's gone, I really like motorbikes, getting really pissed and shagging other people's husbands. And at some point, they've gone, you thought of being a vicar? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
especially this swinging situation. People are, are just meeting for the first time, I imagine, or, or you know, they've, they've organised it on the internet and then they've got together. Do, do you think there's a bit of pillow talk, a little bit of, like, in the middle of it? Like, what do, what do you do for a living, then? I'm a vicar. Yeah, and I'm sure you are, yeah. <laughs> it's better than... Hey, love, have a guess how much I weigh. <laughs> Shall we see whether this uh, female vicar uh, misbehaving is one of the most talked about things this week?